It is I, Jason the Poser Graves, and Shin Megami Tensei 2 is incremental in its approach. A basic design with a comparatively interesting and aggressive narrative. It's a little more Shin Megami Tensei than Shin Megami Tensei. Witnessing this game is to observe Shin Megami Tensei before it had observed itself. Here it is, stripped bare. Everything you might expect from the upcoming Shin Megami Tensei 5. Anything you might associate with a modern RPG. Only a little less calculated or a little less user friendly. Before we were reamed through the chest and buried with cliches, there existed the Super Famicom Shin Megami Tensei. This is that, only with a two this time. So what's new? What isn't? Well, you can tell this was cheaply made like the first. Lots of repeating assets, not many musical tracks. Hell, the final boss and ending don't even get their own unique songs. An easy tell is when I can show you the entire game in four screens. Everything the light touches is made of one of these four building blocks. Battles, dungeons, overheads, or text boxes. There's no magic here, no one-off gimmicks, no pizzazz whatsoever. Again, like the first game, you can't see objects or NPCs until you're cohabiting the same grid space. Save points are still stretched few and far between. Though still glitchy, for example, the maximum HP is supposed to be 999, and I have more than that here, the ones I did encounter were all eminently innocuous, so it's less of a problem with this one. For better or for worse, battles are also less susceptible to cheesery, which is excellent for obvious reasons, you don't want your game to be easily cheated, but crummy in a way because your victory is not guaranteed anymore if your fastest character is able to cast Bufa. The dungeons are shorter as a whole, but have more traps, more warps, and more shenanigans to try and trip you up. I'd wager that the final area of the first Shin Megami Tensei is larger than the top five areas of this game combined. Negotiating with demons is back and appears to be less random. In the first game, it may as well have been a slot machine, which this game has, by the way. Results not only had no rhyme or reason, but nothing was able to be duplicated. In 2, most of the time choosing the same dialogue options with like monsters results in the same, or at least a similar, outcome. You actually might need to keep an eye on your mag. Last time this was in my eyes a wasted mechanic, though I'm undecided whether or not I'm a fan of how it was fixed. It's not that they balanced enemy drops better, or that demons cost more per step. It's that swarths of encounters and entire sections of the game don't drop any mag at all, while the rest of it still drops way too much. It results in you grinding out mag and the areas you can find it, and then spending it in places where you can't. A godsend is how dungeon maps are now tethered to your L button. I have no idea how I made it through SMT1 without this basic common courtesy. If you want to sell stuff, this time there is an appraiser. It's still an extra step that shouldn't be there, but having the ability to see what your items actually do before you use them is necessary, is fundamental, and again, I can't believe it wasn't in the first game. Now all these comparisons, they're all tangible, easily quantifiable things, but the prime connection and juxtaposition I'd like to observe is how this is a different type of story. The stakes are higher this time around. Less than halfway through 2, you fight all these overpowered endgame law bosses from the first time in a swift boss rush. They're so disposable that I auto-battled through them, as if to say, yeah, this is how powerful you were last time around. The protagonist of the first game, who you've seen an in-universe statue of by now, this was as strong as he ever was. But here, in Shin Megami Tensei 2, we're just getting started. It's been a few generations since the events of the first game, and humanity is to live with the fallout. I've read online that this follows assuming the neutral route played out last time, but it might as well have been Law and the Messians, or stand-in for Christians who won, because they're the ones who are in power now. Mankind now lives on top of the giant pyramid constructed to host the Thousand Year Kingdom. It is host to different sub-communities, collectively referred to as Millennium. The Great Flood has receded, uncovering Japan as a home to the mutants, human demon crossbreeds, and other scourges by way of cross-pollination or the nuclear fallout. You start as a low class, though far from the lowest class, warrior. You're living in a community dubbed Valhalla, which is like this game's Las Vegas or the City of Sin. The Messians have taken control of society and enforced their virtues on most of the city. Things like gambling, fighting for sport, and many vices are outlawed by the central government, but they're legal here because even in a post-apocalypse future society, people still 
want to gamble. They also enforce a rigid class structure, with first, second, and third class citizens each permitted to further peaks than the classes below them. For example, residents of the center, the capital of Millennium, are allowed arm computers and the ability to travel freely. Whereas if you hail from the ruined Tokyo, you're not permitted to go anywhere near Millennium. Every year or so, there's a grand tournament held for the residents of Valhalla. Combatants fight to the death until the winner is allowed entry and granted full citizenship to the center. Your character is an amnesiac. You don't even remember your own name. So this guy finds you and raises you to fight in this blood sport. You don't even name yourself. The guy just calls you Hawk and not having anything else, your character just kind of rolls with it. You've made the finals of this tournament and that's where the events of Shin Megami Tensei 2 start. That's the setup. And from there, many labs are had, tears are shed, and naturally in SMT tradition, you wind up killing God, who in this instance is a floating yellow face. It's a different type of story than SMT1. Here the most interesting things are figuring out your own backstory, the motives of others, and how the world around you works. Where in the first game, it's very much about the here and now. Anything that happens before the events of SMT1 are irrelevant. Everything that is important happens in the present tense. Where here, in Shin Megami Tensei 2, you're confronted with many mysteries, both large and small. Things such as, who am I? Why would somebody want to steal a baby from the center? What kind of dirt do these two scientists have on how our society operates? Why are the mountains moving? Why are these people so obsessed to a cult-like degree with working in this shitty factory? Why are there earthquakes every five to 10 minutes? And who is this man asking you the names of these people in a flashback? As Shin Megami Tensei 2 goes along, you keep peeling back the layers. Some of these answers are quick, others are dangled in front of you, only to be revealed 40 hours after the questions are raised. This game has reveals, fake reveals, twists on those fake reveals. What they were able to accomplish with such limited means of storytelling, it's proof that even with essentially just text boxes, or the occasional graphical change of pace, you can still weave a compelling tale, because this is not the type of game to blend storytelling with gameplay. For the most part, battles are always battles and story moments are always just the story moments. They exist separately. And what you get out of the plot is all put into text boxes and exposition dumps. Which normally is bad storytelling, but in this case I was invested enough for it to work. It proves that if you have something interesting to say, it can shine through regardless of the other circumstances. Our sense of choice is more apparent and impactful than last time as well. This game isn't like an angel or devil scenario. In the first game, and from what I remember of 4, they were essentially made up of two characters trying to pull you in separate directions, with you having having to decide which one of them to ally with. The waters are much muddier this time around. Rather than shoving people in your face, it allows events to unfold and lets you make the choice. You're not choosing between two characters this time, but rather from two ideologies. This game doesn't need to manifest them into some dude who simply spitballs their groupthink onto you. SMT2 asks you how you feel, and every direction has merit. If Atlas's goal with these alignments is to make it hard to pick a side because they all have some kind of validity, they did a considerable and commendable job here. You can sympathize with Law by talking yourself into the corruption of leadership, being why the Thousand Year Kingdom failed instead of the core idea. After all, the center seemed to be doing okay, and maybe you're also okay with living in that perfect virtual reality world those humans were trapped inside. The Law Path is corrupt and often hypocritical. The reoccurring theme that people do not often practice what they preach is central. The Center Council orders the destruction of Valhalla because they could not find one rogue scientist hiding in there. They were willing to suck all the air out of Holy Town for a similar reason. And they would have done it too if you hadn't intervened. It's a chilling and real tale about how naturally, when someone or a group believes that they are in the right, all of their actions, no matter how heinous, become justified. They're okay with their ideal created world consisting of brainwashed zombies strapped to VR headsets and try to kill you when you learn the truth without even so much as a dialogue option letting you agree with their methods because their methods are correct in their mind. If you side with law, God literally destroys the entire earth to start anew, deeming humanity a failure because not everyone could live up to his ideal paradise. 
and it ends with you confronting him about this mass genocide. I do like the idea that God could be on the hook for his own mandates to humankind. Most of the time their relationship is one way, as in we should do what God says. But he's never held any kind of a standard, and it's interesting that he is here. It's not like he's actually God, as in THE God, anyway. Everything is a manifestation. He's a warped perception formed from the need for authority. Belief shapes how the supernatural is perceived. As long as there are people, there will always be a YHVH. He's seen as real to the people in the game because he is. But not to you though, even in the law path. shoulder, Chaos is a basic leading the underdogs to victory story, with demons fawning over the idea of just seeing the sun. It's to overthrow our rigid class-based society. Shin Megami Tensei 2 keeps descending deeper. When you think you're in the weirdest, most underground part, it just keeps going down. You start in a slum of sorts. Half the people in Valhalla talk about how great it is, while the other half can't shut up about wanting to leave. Even Valhalla has slums. A slum within slums. The Demon Realm, the Abyss, is a whole society below even the ruins of Tokyo. It's unsettling, and inhabited primarily by demons. It's paganism versus Christianity. They do what feels good instead of what is good. The game makes it a point to go out of its way to make sure that you know that humans and demons fuck. They want to abolish the center and dismantle their classist society based on control, and to rebuild it with the help of Lucifer the Devil. The cons deciding with chaos are obvious. It's in the name. There would be no peace, there would be no equality. Law's idea of equal is that some people are more equal than others. Which is why there's a third option. No more guidance, no more master plans. Neutrality is to reject this game's common talking point. That we need guidance that we need something to cling to, to use this game's verbiage. It is to say to God and Lucifer, no. Actually, you need me. You need us to cling to you, not the other way around. People collectively are strong, and it is the gods who are weak. They need us. We don't need them. Though without gods, there is no safety net. Humanity almost destroyed the planet in the first game. Hell, you go to some form of purgatory in this game, and an NPC laments how the protagonist from the first game wasn't always helping the world be a better place. The road to destruction is paved with good intentions. The law gods in charge of the center created you. Literally. They bioengineered you out of thin air to become the messiah, because they were sick of waiting for God to send one himself. And if they could do anything right, it was that. They did an incredible job. Too incredible, in fact. They created a juggernaut. Why align yourself with anyone when you can blast everything away and forge your own path? going to play Shin Megami Tensei 2, know that at times it's like pulling teeth. There is so much fucking backtracking in this game, more than in anything I've ever played. 
There's a dungeon connecting a place called Holy Town to the center. The center, as you can guess by the name, is a fairly important location. Early on, the teleportation device in the center goes down and never comes back. Meaning that if you want to access the center, this dungeon connecting these two places becomes the easiest way. How many times do you think over the course of the game I trekked through here? How many? The answer is 22 times. The game is brutal with money early on, but it's negligible by the end. Reviving a human character in the first few hours is going to cost something like 4,000 maka, which is far from a pittance at that time, yet it only scales to around twice that by endgame. And by then, your wallet won't feel any lighter. I love how this game contextualizes the sound test as the DJ playing a club. A real shame that the music in this game is the definition of nothing special. Shin Megami Tensei 2 has pacing issues, and that's what really sets it apart from some of the greats. There are two notable roadblocks which can piss off to the abyss. They stop all momentum dead in their tracks. For the most parts, the events in the story are told well. Elements flow into each other like they ought to. Here's an early sequence of events that happen. After you win the tournament to gain citizenship to the center, a woman approaches you asking for help. She's a resident of the center, you see, and is looking for her missing baby and these two scientists which went missing after an explosion. As a result, you go looking for them together. Find the scientists, learn things you were not supposed to learn about the center, but more pertinently, you unknowingly alert them to where the scientists are hiding. Because of this, the center opts to destroy all of Valhalla. It's a place of sin that they don't approve of, and this gives them an excuse to cut off dead weight in their eyes. Because of this, it turns one of their top military officials, and presumably the player, against them. Predicting this, they preemptively lock you out of the center. As you can see, up until this point, each event has happened because of the last and that's how good stories are generally told. A common problem with video game stories, and just poorly planned ones in general, is that they're liable to devolve into a series of disconnected events. Think of, to use an easy example, Final Fantasy Mystic Quest. You go to the forest town, save them from their skeleton problem, and then what? Well, you go to the ice town, because it's the next one you'd come across, and they're having their own self-contained problem. Rinse and repeat until the game is over. Up until this point, Shin Megami Tensei 2 has done a wonderful job of avoiding that pitfall, but here, and now, all momentum in our story is lost. Their solution to a lull like this is horrendous, and it's compounded by the fact that they go to this crutch twice. In this outlined instance, you wander around the former city of Tokyo until you find a mutant who wants to revive some prince, which requires you to find all of his body parts and then fuse them together. It's a fucking easter egg hunt, so like an idiot, you're expected to abound face and comb the game for these plot MacGuffins. And why? Just because some guy told you to, and you have nothing else to do as a character at the moment? It's lousy. The exact same thing happens again later on when you need to gain access to the Abyss. You already found a way into the Abyss, why are they making you find another one? These parts suck, and there's no other way to put it. What we have here is a good game that could have been great. These fetch quests and all this forced backtracking just bloated. As it stands, Shin Megami Tensei 2 is an above average 48 hour experience, but it could have been a fantastic, an all time 25 to 30 hour one. Anyway, SMT3 Nocturne Remastered comes out on Switch and PS4 today. So go out and buy, 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 consume, consume. Remember, until next time, never trust anyone who needs a haircut. Au revoir.